Welcome to the 2013 Derby City Classic. This is the Bigfoot 10 Ball 10 Foot Challenge. This is the Inside Pool production. I'm Alvin with Inside Pool. I'm here with Freddie Agnier, and we're going to do a match with the great Niels Fan and Ronnie Alcano. Volcano, is that his nickname? <laughs> volcano, <laughs> Alcano? I don't know. The Volcano. Ronnie Alcano. And, this uh, is the Bigfoot uh, Challenge, a single elimination tournament. We're down to the last four. Race to 11, by the way. Race to 11. We're sponsored by Diamond Billiards, Simona's Cloth, OBQs, Kamui, the Bank Shot Calculator, and PoolPlayersExcuses.com with the Crying Towel, as well as InsidePoolMag.com. This is on InsidePool.tv, coming at you live from the Horseshoe Casino in southern Indiana. Yes, we are. Niels is practicing right Ooh. now, so we're going to... Uh, I'm sure he's just going to practice a couple more wrecks, get it all going, and then we'll be ready to lag. All right, so... I think we need to move these straight pool scores out of, out of the background to, uh, so that people aren't confused and get uh, the, 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 the other score in there, I guess. They're going to use that one, which is fine. Oh, they're going to use that? Okay. Um, of course they can. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, Why not, right? Brighter. We know whose side is whose. So Niels Fan hails out of Holland, correct? Holland. Holland. And Ronnie Alcano is, of course, a Filipino. From the Philippines. Some people like to say the Republic of the Philippines. The Republic. Uh, other people say the Philippine Islands. I just say the Philippines. The Philippines. Or the PI. Nice shot, Niels. Niels is uh, the only one that I've seen that really understands this table. Yeah, I do. Uh, I, I, we just assume that Orcolio and, and, and uh, Ronnie uh, also understand, but we haven't really seen them much, have we? No. We've only, uh, this will be our, our final 10 foot 10 ball match. The finals will be played downstairs. Um, so this is it, everybody. This is our, this is the semifinals of the tournament. And good to go. W welcome everybody out on Ustream. Big thanks to Ustream.tv for supporting Inside Pool Magazine and putting us on their front page. Really appreciate their support. And we've done millions of viewers. And it's been just absolutely awesome. So we're rocking 800 solid right now as we get ready for this match. So go ahead and blast it out across Facebook, YouTube, or excuse me, uh, Twitter and all that good stuff, all that social networking. Instagram. Whatever yeah. social networking. Here we go. We're going to get it rocking live. Once again, this is Freddie Agnew, the corner man, with Alvin Nelson from Inside Pool Magazine. We'd like to thank Jay Helford, who's been the tournament director. He's been uh, absolutely all over the place. Oh, how, yeah. does, how does he get it straight? Look at this lag. Here's the lag. Somebody's going to come up short. Oh, no. They, what is this? A practice lag? <laughs> that was like the, uh, some uh, bar leagues that I played at where uh, they do some kind of practice lag. Oh, Ooh. no. It's cool. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah, we're uh. And who's got it? The Ronnie's six got ball. it. Right on. The six ball, the green ball. Yeah, so, so we're. So here uh, we go. This is a race to eleven, and the top prize is twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. That's right. Yeah, twenty thousand straight up. Or so the, uh, it's single elimination too. So you only get one shot. Thousand man, uh, thousand dollars a man. Ronnie won the world pool championship, didn't he? Well, I'm sure he has. I believe he won it in two thousand one. John Slingblade's out there, the answer man. He might know, and uh, of course the rest of our genius pool family. Two thousand six, he was the world pool champion. Perfect. Excellent. And he also played in the finals of the 2007 World Pool Championships against Daryl Peach, and I was there at uh, Araneta Coliseum, and it was live. All right, so we got an interesting first break. He's breaking off the rail Ronnie's dead awesome. center. We haven't seen wow, this Wow, look at this. He's going to draw off the one ball here. I think he's going for the corner balls. Well, it's interesting. I, I don't agree with that break in any format because wow. it's a little bit too symmetrical and nothing likes to go. But, sure. you know, he, on a 10-foot table, maybe he saw success here. But, hmm, uh, maybe he did. This table is going to play different than the other 10 footers because of the lights. So clearly, he didn't oh, make a ball. The ball is uh, the table is wide open. If he's got uh, a chance to get the one and get out of out of the corner, the five ball looks like it's right in the way. You got to just gun for this, I think. 
Okay, I was wrong. He was not in the finals. He was in the. It was in one of the matches, semifinal matches. It was actually Roberto Gomez that right. was in the finals. Oh, really, Superman? Yeah, that's right. I remember now. So he's trying to get out of that five, and he did very nicely done. Decided to make sure he's got the angle there. If he can get the two, three, everything lays pretty well. Uh, the toughest ball on the table would be. Um, well, I'm really looking at this, and uh, it's the length. At this point, it's going to be the length on the first, first game. As long as there's no opening game jitters. Break was uh, wide open. Uh, it usually happens in the beginning rack. Right. A few racks. You're going to see some struggling, some misses from these guys. Once they get rolling, though, once they get the speed of the table down. Once they get pretty straight on this because you, you, uh, you can't double the corner because the 10 ball's in the way, of course. He's going to be using the bridge an awful lot, as of all, all of them will be. Oh, this, yeah. This one's going to be better. one of those close ones where... Uh, you you want to convince yourself you don't need the bridge, but you, you, you do. Yeah, you better respect this table and grab that bridge yeah. because... He'd like to be about where he is right now for the four ball next. If he's dead straight. It's just a snatch back. Or I don't think he wants to flirt with a seven because I think that cue ball's going straight backwards. Now, Niels is a nine-time Team Europe Moscone Cup member. More times than anybody else, I believe. He would have been tied or so with the... Mm -hmm with the Ralph Sakai, but Ralph didn't sure. do it this year. Straight back about where nice. he was. Give him a slight angle. Everything becomes easy here. Just uh, really just roll this ball in. You'll be natural for the five. Roll the five and you're natural for the six. Six and the seven's in the middle of the table. Yeah, this is this guy's the model of mechanics. Yeah, seven to the eight is uh, is going to be the, the your, your uh, toughest part about this pattern. And really, it, I'm saying tough. It's not the pattern that's going to be tough. It's first game on 10-foot table jitters. I think he's going to shake his head a little bit here because it's a little bit farther than he really wanted that. You'd hate to put any of the balls down table uh, in play here. So he's going to cozy this, leak it in. Inside English, nice and easy. The choice is whether or not he wants to, to flirt with the eight in the side, which goes. The people have been shooting in the side pockets uh, much more than I ever thought they, they would be earlier. Uh, or whether or not you want to play for the eight ball in the corner Five pocket. Inch. I know we're looking at the eight ball. He's shooting the six ball now, but I don't expect him to be not on the eight ball in a minute. The side pockets are five-inch opening. Yeah, so they have a little bit more. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's, that's more than the four and seven sixteenths uh, that we're, we're looking for the corner pockets. Still fairly small for a side pocket, but uh, on this 10-foot table, he seemed to get a little... Uh, people have been firing him in the side, into the side pockets more than I thought. His angle looks like he can just... Yeah, he's flirting with a side pocket and really doesn't seem to be much of an issue here. He might end up being uh, in a position where he has to go three rails around on the nine, or he goes forward with inside to get on the top of the nine ball here. He's been playing so well that I, I really don't expect him to do anything except for forward with a little bit of inside and uh, get above the nine on the high side so he can float down to the ten. Well, he didn't. He didn't. He's flat. And he's got to go around the table. All right. But why not? You know, it's such a big table to let her loose here. Well, Niels absolutely punished Shane Van Boning on this table, I felt. I mean, it was... He's got to come up a little short here. I expect him to make it, but... Um, Niels, this is perfect for his game. He's, he, he's a fire. He likes to fire at balls, and this is his... He stays down so well. He can control He can control the movement of these two balls he's better than anybody, I that think. That one wiped its feet on the way it in, sure but uh, he got some good, good pocket speed there. And the tables have been fair, but, and it's relatively new cloth, and we've got the lights going on here, so balls aren't going to rattle on a shot like that as much as the other tables. And he was firing up one nothing. You got that right. I'd like to thank our sponsors again, Diamond Billiards, uh, for this uh, Bigfoot challenge, as well as Simonis Cloth, Ivan Simonis Cloth, the tournament blue cloth you see here, OBQs, Kamui with their, with their tips and chalk, the bank shot calculator. Pool excuses, pool, pool players excuses .com with the crying table, uh, crying towel, sorry, and uh, insidepoolmag.com. You're on insidepool.tv, either on Ustream or straight to insidepool.tv. This is Freddie Agnew, the corner man with Alvin Nelson from Inside Pool. 
Neil was to be with you. breaking to, from the side rail in his match yesterday. I had pretty good success with it and didn't didn't get away from this uh, this break. And he thundered some the other day. One ball in the side pocket. Man. That's a nice ball to make uh, on the first break. And if he could get that every single time, Ronnie Elcano is going to be wow. in trouble. Wow. Niels is a beast, man. He is just a freaking predator, man. He's awesome. No shot for the three ball. Wow. So I might be thinking about uh, playing a combination on the 3-5, which is quite... Mm -hmm, that's not good. Yeah, it's, it's asking for a lot on this table. I think you'd sure normally is. do it if you were playing on a bar table. You'd be shooting at 3-5 all day long after the deuce, but this isn't a bar table by it's any means unless you're from England and you play on snooker tables all day long. Right. This is the <laughs> This is the this big is the foot. Beast. This is the big foot. Somebody had asked earlier on the chat, uh, wouldn't it be funny if somebody came in with those big foot slippers? That would be just hilarious. Yes. So he's got a full bridge going. Got a full bridge. And I, I like to say that he's going to circle draw this out to the up, other side of the table. Playing three ball in the side pocket. There it is, the circle draw. That's what the trick shot players like to shoot, call it. And uh, he's a little, he didn't come up quite, uh, quite as high as he needed to. Uh, I think he'll still negotiate this, but it is a tougher shot. But I like the action there. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to bow out to the mastermind, J.R. Calvert, here, and you can have some real commentary with somebody that knows how to play pool. Live, baby, live. We'll talk a little bit later. All right. Thanks, Alvin. Have fun. Can you switch? Or you got to run. Good chance. Grab me. I think uh, if he likes this ball, he's going to thin this ball into the side pocket and come back and forth. It's a tough shot, but he's uh, he's made it. He's, uh, he's made it in there. JR, how are you doing uh, this afternoon? Excellent, excellent. How are you doing, Freddie? I'm doing very well. I had a good night's sleep. Uh, pretty icy on the roads last night, but uh, I crawled home. Other people looked like they just wanted to be NASCAR racers on the icy uh, roads last night. Wow. Ronnie Alcano broke the first uh, first rack and uh, came up dry, and Niels promptly ran out the rack. And uh, this is on Niels' break, uh, the second game. Niels just uh, had executed a great circle draw shot around and you just walked in the door and uh, I think that he's really comfortable on these tables. We saw him yesterday. I see all of our friends are out there. Hello everybody. Glad to be here and uh, glad to be, you know, in the presence of these guys. That's right. How great are they playing right now? I know, you know, we thought, uh, of course, uh, we expect some trouble with the 10-foot tables, and this is really uh, trying to showcase uh, who's got the talent on these kind of tables. And we saw Niels, and I just assumed that Ronnie and the other players that are, that are here, you know, Dennis Arculio and uh, Johnny Archer are still in, uh, that uh, they really have, the cream has risen to the top yet again, you know, saying a couple of names that are always at the top. Yeah. I, I think that's a fair way to look at it. I mean, they, you, some guys you just know they're going to be there at the right. end. You'd probably expect that Alex uh, Pagulayan would be here, but he had to play a Dennis, so one of those two would have been out and one of them was in. You know, so. Right. I haven't <laughs> seen Ronnie play at all uh, yet. I only saw him some rack, so he's here, so he must have been doing something. But Niels, this is like a bar table for him apparently because he doesn't look like he's having any kind of problems uh, putting balls in the hole and getting the right position. Well, if you remember yesterday, the way he was making the table look, <laughs> I mean, he's just amazing. So he takes a 2 nothing lead? Is that 2 what nothing. Have? Neil's fine. When he played that straight pull match, it I made it look like it was a joke. Right, right. So he Ronnie has done nothing here except for break, uh, win the lag, so th there's a plus on that winning the lag on a 10-foot table. He almost froze it, so we've seen some lags come up quite short. I was going to say, if he lost the lag, that would be his problem right there. There you go. <laughs> but it's not. That's, that's not the problem. Niels he didn't dog the, the flip. He, he didn't dog the flip this time. <laughs> yeah, Niels has been coming from the side rail just like he did yesterday, and uh, he made the one ball directly in the side pocket the last time, so I'm sure he'll stay here. I think he's got the speed down, too. He went with a hard, hard break the last, uh, the last time... Uh, Oh, we just missed that one. Five it's a ball. solid break. It is a mm. solid break. And I think he's going to stick with that side. Is If he can hit it solidly, that one likes the side pocket from where he's at. I don't know if you remember, JR, yesterday, his last 10-ball match, his last break, he hit him probably harder than he had in all the previous ones, and a one ball went right in the side pocket, if I remember correctly. And uh, I think 
that's what he realized from the side as hard as as hard as he's got <laughs> with control <laughs> yeah it, it's just amazing and you know the athleticism that one has to have right yeah. and how smart you of an athlete you have to be is maybe the best way to say it because it you're moving everything and you're striking and you have to be accurate down to a 30 second of an inch right <laughs> going all out with <laughs> all your body out with your body everything's moving <laughs> ronnie's up at the table and he's uh, he's looking at air i think he might have a just the whisper of the one ball if he can hit it It's interesting, you know, he's looking at this and, it, and the balls haven't moved and neither is Ronnie. He's just staring at it. Normally you'd like to see people walking around the table. There he goes. <coughs> looking for the push. I, I agree with this push. Yeah, you put it somewhere where you can at least see a little bit more than a lick. You see those little short strokes, he's just tapping it. There you go. It froze to the rail, you know, and uh, you know, obviously he's, he's that's where he wanted it, but if it was off the rail, uh, I think Niels is going to shoot it, but it's on the rail, and that suddenly the percentages of him taking this shot start going down. But I think, actually, he's got he's got a lot of ball to hit there, right? It's not like it's a super thin. Yeah, he's got a lot of ball. He can actually yeah, I think he can do a lot more than uh, I originally looked because I was looking at the wrong angle. I mean, that's a good shot of... Yeah, he's got more ball than I thought. He can do a lot more. He can actually hit it full in the face at this point if he wanted to. He could bank it and stop the cue ball and yeah, yeah. let everything go up table if he wants. Maybe even let the cue ball go down to the bottom rail so it really gets tough. Ronnie's doing something. I know he doesn't mean to, but he's got his white towel and he's shaking it a couple times right in the line of sight of, of Niels. So you can see it in his hand right there. Mm-hmm. It's not really moving. You no, know, but it was a second ago, and I think he realized, whoops, I'm, I'm moving my hands whoops. all over the place with this white towel. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I got to save that move for the 9 or the 10. Right, that's right. <laughs> He's wasted it. He get it to do one time, he wasted it. Good safety there. I mean, uh, he's just trying to get it down table. But I think he actually got a little lucky, didn't he, because the one ball came on top of these balls. Mm-hmm. Hidden by one ball. I think he's got a pretty good two-railer into this lower right-hand corner if he really wants to go for it. There's a lot of safety ability with a 2-3 in the middle of the table and a 5-7 on the side. Yeah, and you'll see, you'll see this, this kind of kick from the Filipinos and others. You know, you see Shane trying to kick this one all the time. Just, just two rails and then hitting one part of the, the right side of the one ball as you see it. And an up table. Mm, it's not the worst. It's not the worst if he, if he gets away with it. Um, you think saying gets get away with it, just trying to make the cue ball go up the table and one ball stay down here. And, you know, we, we make it sound like, well, that's, of course, a standard shot. It's still a difficult shot, but that is the shot that all of the Filipinos and anybody who's watched the kicking game in the past uh, decade or two, that would have been the shot. <laughs> that would have been the shot. He didn't want to hit the one down by the two. That was, you know, they right. split them apart textbook-wise, I guess is the best way to put it. Because just, you, you know, you can leave the whole ball and still not leave it out. Right. A case in point. Here, if if I, if he doesn't have the full ball, it wouldn't matter. He'd have he'd be shooting the same the same duck. Now he may take the cue all the way to the bottom rail here and bank the one up by the one two. One up by the two. I think he's forced to do that. That's a nice shot. Oh, he's no, going to get a little unlucky. Oh, no. the three balls there, so. <laughs> He's left him the easy kick, though. And right. the, you always hear the old timers say, "Take away the short rail." All right. <sighs> that happens a lot. Like if you're, if you're snuggling a cue ball, uh, the cue ball up to an object ball, you got to freeze it on there, or else you've left too much gap for the simple one rail kick. Yeah. But in this case, um, you know, he's just trying to get it behind the wall of balls, and uh, I thought he was buying the ten, and then I thought he was buying the eight. But he's got the window to the single rail kick. Just guard against the scratch here. He wants to hit, go high and spin it from the top. He wants to put spin on this and hit the top side, just like that. He's got to make the five. Oh, no. I know. But he, but oh, he, look he, at this. That was kind of, uh, how did that ball get all the way down here? <laughs> yeah. Well, he actually hit a little bit of low cue on that. Uh, uh, 
for it to come to that line because what he was trying to do is get the cue down on the bottom rail again. I was surprised. At least that's what I would have been trying was high cue to get the cue to go down and the one to come back up. Uh, but yeah, maybe he was trying something different there that I didn't see. One ball actually uh, uh, fortunate for Ronnie lays right on their end rail. To make this, he can, Niels, I think, can make it, but to get back up table looks. <coughs> yeah, there's, there's no real easy answer here, but I could say this is I have no problem hitting this ball with inside English and coming in between the 10 5. Uh, but I'm left handed. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> Being that he's going to be behind the back, he may kick this ball firmly, or he may even play safe. Don't be surprised if the cue isn't on the back of the eight. See how he cues up here to see if he's going to spin the inside. I think that he can just hit this with a high ball and hit it as thin as possible. If he goes go between down between the ten and the five. <laughs> if he goes between the ten and the eight and misses the three, be one of the greatest oh. shots with a bridge I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Since he didn't line that one up, I doubt he's trying that. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> okay. So he was trying that. <clears throat> <laughs> he didn't I, quite get, get there, but look, the, he's on the two ball. <laughs> yeah. Um, he may use the seven to slow him down here to, because he's going to cut this thin. He might hit a little inside. He doesn't yeah. want to run into the four, six, eight, ten. Right. Running well, into the seven has the promise, though. So. Just watching him, uh, you know, he pointed down the line towards the seven, so it certainly looks like if he thins the two, which uh, you expect, he's going to be going down to the seven. The seven will stop the skew ball. And the only hard part here is he's inside English. Just a hair. And he's he's rolling this soft, which funny things can happen if you don't stroke this ball correctly. Good shot. He's uh oh well did he did he hit this so hard that it plowed through? He's shaking his head because it was exactly how it was drawn up. Well see he was afraid of that soft stroke, so right, he so used he a seven. It, he hit it firm and let the seven do its work. I, I I don't see really an issue here unless the four. I guess the four doesn't do anything after the three. I can see drawing this ball back and maybe shooting the four on the same side. Yeah, and he asked, he can he can cue this because the cue ball stopped uh, in front of the pocket, so he's not on the rail technically. You know, and he looks like exactly what he's going to do. Upper left hand corner too. If he cheats the pocket, he can take it down by the spot. There so, you go. So he did have an angle. Yeah. And was forced to come uh, uh, below the ball and shoot it back up table. Mm hmm Well, this is the key shot of the rack. Yeah, because if he gets the four to the five, uh, then the rest of it lays pretty nicely. I know it sounds funny. I might consider shooting this in the upper right-hand corner. Yeah, I, I think both choices are about the equal difficulty and the equal impressiveness of, of the pattern of the cue ball, you know, the path of the cue ball. I just like it because I don't want to go over to the right by that side pocket and control this angle. When he shot the circle draw shot a little earlier, it's almost like that told told me that he was going to shoot this shot because it it's the similar shot than mm -hmm. the outside uh, of the ball. Yeah, I, I like the speed that he was hitting this ball at, too. Is it, it didn't seem like you were doing a lot with the cue ball. The other one seemed like you had a little bit of degree of difficulty at it. You know, the shallow angle was definitely offset by the fact that you had to move and control the cue ball. You might have missed that ball. Oh, it's gone. Never a doubt. <laughs> well, he, he, uh, he had a foot wiper uh, on the, his first game as well, and... Uh, you know, me, it would drive me nuts, but then again, that's because I'm that type of individual that things like that bother me. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie didn't even move. He didn't blink. He, I don't even know if we, you know, took a breath. We have a referee out there. Toshi Maraguchi is out uh, doing his thing. Toshi's been out there all week. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Can't see him. He's so short. Uh, he could be standing next to the table for all I know. Nice. <laughs> Told you she's been sitting on the side, uh, you know. 
Well, the way uh, Niels was holding there, I, I don't think it's because he was showing his his uh, great, great form. form. <laughs> yeah. I, I think he was begging for the cue ball to keep on coming and maybe afraid to move and st stop its movement. Mm -hmm. Exactly. In the <laughs> words of our begging. our uh, friend George Fells, you know, grow legs, you albino fool. <laughs> grow legs. <laughs> Talking about the white ball. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. Coming. He's going to get a lick oh, here that goodness. just is like perfect. <laughs> oh goodness! Uh, I mean, hey, he deserves all the luck he can he can muster there, but uh, I hit that one um, right at the nine. Bad things could have happened. Well, He's this is a left-handed shot. Yeah, this still is stretched out. I keep forgetting, uh, you know, it looked well, good to me. <laughs> and now do you go up and down? I mean, the table's so big. Yeah, you go up and down this. Yeah, I would go up and down. He perfect. hit this one a little bit. Uh, so, no, I guess perfect. he hit it perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had to see it do a little bit more there, but nice cloth just keeps going. That's right. Fyan is up 3 nothing now. It's another day at the office for Niels. Yeah, that's right. Let's see, today I'm going to, uh, you know, run a few hundred balls, that's dissect right. the world champion on live stream, and uh, I don't know. You already played a match and, you know, dusted that one off. Niels is a former winner here at the Derby City Classic. He won the nine ball event uh, several years ago, and I'm sure the guys in the chat room can tell me what year that was. I believe that the, that year he beat uh, another Filipino. Was it 2006? <laughs> <laughs> it might have been. <laughs> might have been. But, uh... I always li like shooting the break shots for players, and Niels was one where I literally had to aim above his head three feet to get his whole body in there. Yeah. Well, he hit that uh, about the same way he has been. One ball was going straight for the pocket, but uh, something cut him off. I guess uh, we should have some discussions with, uh, with with some math guys to find out why the balls get cut off like that, where normally it, they don't. You know, on the nine-foot tables, they're already in the pockets. Maybe they get kept cut off. Uh, at a certain distance that doesn't exist for the nine foot table, you know, like six inches away from the pocket, they get cut off, or else they would have already been in the pocket, let's right. say, in the uh, nine foot table, three inches away, or something like that. Now, that'd be interesting. That'd be something for somebody to look up. Take a look at where they, the ball gets cut off. That would be interesting. Yeah, because I never, I really didn't think about it until just right now. <laughs> So unless all of you have been thinking about this, then you heard it here first. <laughs> Tricky position here, two to three. It looks like you're forced to give yourself a tough angle. Like right there. Stick the cue ball right there. Well, I kind of. Well, if you can get to the three and the four, the, the rest of the rack looks good. He decided to go back. Uh, that was that was just as uh, just as tricky. He made it look so easy. Another tricky one because the nine ball is definitely in play here to try to get uh, get around to make sure you get to the four ball. Many of us would be shaking our heads uh, after this shot. And he's going to be stretched out, so you think he's going to keep this one on the inside of the 9 chair or go all the way uh, outside? Well, for this one, I'm going to go ahead and keep it inside the 9. Yeah. I don't like this. Ronnie said he hated the whole position, so he rearranged the furniture. <laughs> I can't. I don't even understand what he was trying to do at that pace. Certainly, he didn't want to clip the 5 ball. He went off the air there. He shot straight up in the air. I think so. But if he makes this four ball, uh, as long as he doesn't get trapped by, oh no, the, the seven ball's right in front of him. This, <laughs> he's got to really get below here, doesn't he? 
This is this case where you'd say, what would Efren do? Slow cut with low left hand English four ball, bounce off the rail and into the six, down, bump to seven with a cue ball. Maybe you'd make the five. Me, let's see what I would be thinking here. The six has no hole officially. So I might really look at just drawing off the rail and using the six right. to stop me and rely on the fact that the you know I can mass A or do something to get to the five because the cue might even run into the five after that. Right, right. <coughs> I was wondering if you go ahead and play the five. And I think that's what he was trying to do, just go ahead and play the five. It was a perilous position uh, all the way from, uh, from the three ball on up. Every piece was a little bit tricky. Two to the three, three to the four was tricky. Obviously, he had a problem with it because he rearranged the furniture. Four to the five was extremely tricky. And now all it's done, all he's done is open up the table for the guy who really hasn't missed yet. That one uh, almost, gave a little babaloo. I almost gave him the commentator jinx, <laughs> but that won't stop me. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not tricky anymore. Sometimes it gets tricky when a ball is hanging so deeply in the pocket. It kind of fools people in how hard they're supposed to hit out. Because there's no follow out anymore, you know, and draw it out. And as you can see, Niels actually ended up stopping that ball. I'm sure he wanted something else other than a stop shot. Well, the we have to recover. <coughs> Back in line. The thing that really can get you on this table is the fact that you're used to the positioning of the ball to be an easier shot than what it really is. Than what it really is. You okay. take it for granted and you cinch a ball thinking, well, I'm just going to cinch the next ball. And suddenly you're on a, you remember you're on a 10 foot table and it's got tight pockets and you've got to come with a decent shot now. Right. And I think that's catching some guys off. Like that four ball that Ronnie missed. Right. It wasn't really the world's hardest shot. No. And he's trying to make a little bit more happen on it. And suddenly, you got nothing happening. You got nothing happening because you didn't even make the ball. Yeah, I didn't, I, the pace he hit it, it did look like he was trying to make the four, but the four never even came close. It's like he was in between making the four and making the five, and he made neither. Yeah, Niels looks like he's in complete control, and he's already he's already feeling good. Ronnie has really barely shot at the table yet. The one time he came up, which was his last time up, it wasn't easy. Uh, nothing was easy. The whole rack didn't look easy. It looked like if he'd got out, it would have been pretty spectacular. But then again, it's Ronnie Elcano, so we expected him to get out with spectacularity. Instead, it's Niels Fine flipping his card one more time, taking a commanding lead for nothing. There's Toshi. Now, for nothing really doesn't mean anything. Um, Eleven nothing does. <laughs> Eleven nothing does. Four nothing doesn't mean anything unless you start looking at numbers and such, so that really doesn't make much sense. But we can't look at it. We just spotted Niels Fian four games <laughs> on a race to eleven. <laughs> He's got four games on the wire. Imagine people betting uh, betting on Ronnie coming into it. Four games on the wire for Niels. <laughs> They say they can hear one commentator, not the other. Really? Oh, no. Don't tell me I've been talking all this time and nobody can hear me. It's sad. Wait a minute. Give us a... Say something, Fred. Testing. One, two, three. No, Testing. No. One, two, three. Your sound did. levels are on. Okay. Neil's fine. Break from the side again. And the one ball did not go in the side pocket. It came up short, but it came up and decided to dribble in the corner. 8-9 is a real problem here on the right-hand side pocket. Well, side pockets. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't go anywhere. The four ball is uh, also only goes into... Well, I suppose if you can get to the four ball below. but uh, He'll draw path. off the two uh, into the corner where the 8-9 is. Uh, stay below the 8-9 and use the three to come straight down and maybe shoot to four on the side. And the reason he, Niels was looking long and hard at this four nine, or four ten, is because the eight nine's eight tied nine's up, tied and up. it might be a freebie. But he's 
and there he's looking at the four on the side is what I was talking about earlier and I don't think I don't I think, think that'll be a solution. I don't believe that's a solution. I don't think it can go off the nine. I don't think it's one that I'd want to shoot right. on this table. I mean you know, if we had five yeah. options, option five would probably be uh, getting the position to shoot the eight ball three rails around and, and uh, tuck the cue ball right to the nine ball. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a shot at it. Well, you know, the nine is so tough. But uh, we were a long ways away from that. But the seven, as I look at it, the seven leads to that shot that I just talked about, uh, hitting the eight ball out and going three rails. That's another nice kiss for uh, Niels. Well, he may have his built-in uh, break shot slash position. He can follow this <laughs> ball, and believe it or not, might be able to nudge the nine. <laughs> I think he's a little too flat to be hitting this one with any kind of pace, uh, but I can't really tell. No, no, he's got, a, he's got a healthy disappears. angle. He's got five degrees there, four degrees. So following two rails right around that area that, uh, that he's talking about, um, I'm thinking if he does go that way, maybe it's, it's into the eight. Well, we'll see. Well, this maybe is a natural. You go the other side, you're going to get Archie off the nine of the drink? Yeah, this is a natural, though. If, if you hit it with a lot of high right, it always runs two in the side, <laughs> where yeah. it's really close. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Write that one down, folks. Write that one down. This is a natural. <laughs> I'm still staring at it, and I think it's the eight ball. I think he just misses the nine. Oh, he doesn't even want to do it. He's going 4-10 combination. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> Combo City. Says, I don't want this problem. You take it. I love it because he played position here. I don't think he could have gotten any better from there, and he still shook his head, probably because it really was just not a, a, a good uh, combination, but he, he's forced himself into this position anyway. Now, what do you do with the cue while you're doing this shot? Well, the four ball's going to go, hopefully it goes up table, so the cue ball should be down here someplace. Do you forward, I think. freeze it to the seven just to be sure? If he could just go forward, I guess it goes forward, and then oh, he plays safe all the way. That just, I, I thought, was I thought he was firing, that. to tell you the truth. I was wondering about it. I, You know, the... There was a safety there, but it was too enticing. And I, since he set up for it, he, I said, eh, shoot. He must be shooting the pair. He shot, yeah. he shot it right at a position where you're looking for a nine. So uh, that was the right shot. Uh, his shot was the right shot. His shot's just the right looks shot. Like he was looking at four nine from the beginning. Maybe he was looking at the four nine uh, for the I don't four wanna, ten, I should say. I don't want to play poker with Niels. <laughs> no, no, no. The way he was looking. It's he fooled me 100% there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, you got to keep... Keep the cue away from the eight, eight nine, nine here. Yeah. Keep it not? away. Yeah. Soft speed will make it not come out to the wi uh, widen the angle. So he did that right. And that was a 50-50 kick. Uh, a lot of times I, I look at the sides of the tables that have the most balls. Sometimes it's obvious that there's five on one end and two on the other. Right. And that's the side where you want to put the balls, you know. Uh, that was three and three, so, you know. Well, kind of right in the middle. The two, the eight and nine are almost one ball, <laughs> the way in that kicking philosophy, right? Does he kick at this one? Because I don't think he just kicks, uh, shoots straight at it. Oh, he had yeah, enough room to shoot him. straight at it, but no, he didn't. I, 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 he's this, straight in on the floor. This, you know, still on not a an easy normal arm. rack on a normal table, it m would still be a problem. But right, right now, whether he makes the four is up, up for grabs. Right. <laughs> Well, and again, Ronnie hasn't shot a, really had a shot to get anywhere here uh, on his previous. Now, I still think that the eight can be made and you can bump the nine by the side. Yeah, you know, the, and the seven leads to that pretty well. So... Yeah, 
that was a good shot. And I'm saying that for a guy who hadn't really shot a ball, that, and that's supposed to be an easy shot, but on this 10-foot table, it's been, you know, getting a lot of people. And he put it right in the heart. He didn't, he didn't rub any neighbors going in or anything like that. Well, Ronnie's getting a real good idea where he wants to be to make this eight. Yeah, I mean, you can see from here, it certainly looks like it goes. I mean, this is perfect. He can, what, it, whatever he needs to do, he's got all the opportunity to do right here, you know. Mm -hmm. You can't get much better. I would have wanted to come out a little bit. I, I'd want to be out about where his stick is right, right now. Right, right. I'd be out there. And he's got an angle the other way. He now he has to draw back to get on that angle, which is okay. Yeah, I think uh, I think <coughs> seemed like that's exactly what he was playing for the line. <laughs> what in the world was that? Maybe he was going to bank it. No, no, I no, guarantee he, you, he didn't miss the stroke that bad. Well, that's uh, if he was banking, that means he was planning going three rails around to the other side, the wrong side. Uh, well, the right, okay, three rails around, but that's not going to happen now. Wow, he is here. He was able to hold that up. Nice, nice shot. Bank. Nice bank. <laughs> if he gets out here, which... I don't want to jinx him, which I've already jinxed, so I guess it's too late. But Great out. Yes, exactly. And this is another one of those shots where, you know, if you're behind it, this is awful, but he doesn't seem to have any issues. That's the jinx. Way That's to go, Fred. <laughs> <That's the jinx. laughs> no, it was not you. He just missed. There's always a question, you know, when you get that cue ball real close to the rail on a cut. On a cut like that. And he rolled it. I mean, yeah. we all know that that ball can be missed when you roll it. Commanding lead gets a little bit bigger. Five nothing. Five nothing this fan fan. Fan fan. I said earlier on the chat that I looked it up and how you pronounce uh, those two, the diphthong. Mm -hmm. And there's like three different ways in uh, in Holland. People from from the Netherlands probably look and saying, No, there aren't. But you're only in one area. <laughs> Well, then it's getting fun. See, uh, Alvin's going to be throwing up color test Indians yeah, here in a minute. Right. For the emergency broadcast system? <laughs> I see. It'll be a night. picture of Alvin with wearing one of the Indian headdresses. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't want to get into that photo folder. No. All right. Niels will stick with this side. He's going to put the kapow to it. Let's see where the one ball, whether or not it goes in or if it gets cut off. Well, it got cut off fairly far away from the And it also was going to come up short again like the, his last break. I can name his tune in two <laughs> notes. <laughs> What's the angle on the one ball here? If he's straight in, you, you draw straight back. Uh, but if he's not... He's got it. He's going to go down table. Going around everything he can over there. Yeah, the 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 four ball isn't really in the way. Yeah, um, right. You know, it it could be if he really catches the rail high, but the more he gets towards the five, he, this isn't that bad. He can work this. And that's the last thing I thought he would do. Yeah, that was an electrical uh, noise. Turned everything. Well, I mean, really, he played for that shot like he was comfortable with it, and uh, he's not settling in. That's nope. 
That's that's for sure. And you know, this is something we talked about yesterday. Now he's behind it. Now every time he comes up the table, if it's not dead easy, it's going to look pretty tough, right? Even though it seemed obvious you're supposed to play for the one to get to the two, whether you go around the table or you draw back and then play the two nine uh, two ten combination, the blue blue combination. And uh, he decided to go forward and play a two way shot to make one of the two balls, and he made neither ball. This two ball, does it pass the five? Big, it, it's close. <clears throat> it's extremely close. I'm thinking it doesn't because Niels put his stick down by the uh, center diamond at the foot rail, as if he's putting something down there. Probably the two ball banking it down. Banging it down, but he's going to get cut off by the three ball. He wanted to pass that three ball, have the cue ball to the center and foot rail. I don't know if that was a good choice or not. Five, three, uh, three, five combination, a uh, two, five combination mm -hmm. was there, but it's letting it loose. I'm getting, uh, interference, something. So Ronnie is. Uh, Again, faced with a tough shot to begin with. If the, if he'd be in the lead, you'd think this would be automatic for him. But yet another shot that he's uh, facing a tough one. So they missed by a mile, and suddenly Ronnie Alcano looks tremendously human. He looks weak right now, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that he's sick or anything like that. I'm just saying he looks lethargic. Uh, well, the legs have been shot out from him at this point, uh, and uh, Niels, I think, uh, is will be all too happy to sweep the leg. Yes, he will. Sweep the leg. Yep. It's five nothing. I mean, certainly would never have believed that this was going to be the the start, but Niels has been playing strong. Now, I like taking this two ball straight across by the eight, and seeing if I can uh, keep the cue underneath the 10 but uh, I don't know where the angles here for that that shot keep the cue underneath the 10 yeah like one rail the cue up into the 10 and try and put the two over by the eight well, I'd, I'd say that's tricky from this angle but uh, it, it seems it, a little thin and you certainly if you hit the five you might go into uh, it's a good uh, shot that's a good shot I was thinking if you go into the five you might pocket the five by, by accident Ronnie is just up and running just to shoot. Kicking this two ball out. No, he was able to Oh, he scratch? No. No. Wasn't even close. He gave a, not a sigh, but more like a chuckle. A little bit of a chuckle. I need a sound check here because my... Uh, if that's me, it's always staying low. Okay. We've got uh, the rules behind us. I'm not sure what Kenny's talking about back there, but he's got his one-hour uh, one discussion on what, what to do today. Kick and stick. It's going to leak out. Well, at this point Nothing here, easy. a little distance when a guy's missing and he's wavering, <laughs> right, right. why not? That's why not? that's good enough safety a lot of times. I think that uh, he's going to put Niels right under the six, one or two rails here. Put the two up by the side pocket, maybe. Well, you maybe. know, if, since he's so far behind, I wonder if you just keep on shooting at this point, you know. Three balls sit in the middle of the tail, they just fire away, and if you get there, you get to keep on going. If not, it's been running that way anyway for you. <laughs> right. Right. I'm sure those are the two things he's thinking. It looks like he's <coughs> trying to cut it in. And the scratch underneath him is in play if he's going to hit the hard. Beautiful shot. Really was. Good speed. You see three, the cue ball is tracking all the way. Well, he needs to keep his form. If this was me, I'd be pumping this three ball in hard just to get it out of my system. But uh, I and he hit that one pretty firm. 
Not uh, not the big pump, but good stroke. I think the six six seven eight is a little tricky, but that's just uh, from a rotation dancing point of view. That's what you want to see there at the center of the pocket every time, because once he starts uh, wiping the feet, it, 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 the pocket becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. I know that when I was uh, playing and I'd be down in this position, a lot of times what worked for me was soft strokes that I built harder and harder throughout the rack. And then by the time I would win the game, you know, you're still a little weak and jittery. Right. Focus on shooting the break, not trying to break the break shot, but use that as one of those strokes to really just hone in your get that stroke straight, you know. You just stop this one. He's pretty firm on, uh, straight on it. Yeah, I might just stop it. That one, it seems like he let loose a little bit. I, I don't. Was he really trying to play for up table like that? I mean, that far up table. I don't think so. I think that one got away from him. Yeah, I think so. It's almost like he, uh, you know, the length of the table, the draw shot, so the, the draw starts rubbing off, and suddenly you're in a follow situation. But if you make Did he this, miss that? No. Oh, okay. No, 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 it looked like the wrong line to we, me. We have, a, we have a funky angled tables tilted from there. Okay. <coughs> yeah, the wall. We don't actually have an arena. We have a room. <laughs> but this is a Good great shot. event. Oh, my God, yes, yeah. I'm not going to, you know, even no. we haven't seen this much, this, this much <laughs> stretched out sliding it around I guess one two pretty good pretty good crowd is appreciative <laughs> here we go Ronnie Elcano he's on the board finally Finally. Is what he would like to That's say. That's right, and maybe he gets to start. And maybe take a second to thank some of our sponsors. Absolutely. Diamond Billiards, for sure, putting on this great event. Adding the money to this, the Bigfoot Challenge. And then, of course, Simona's Cloth. Simona's Cloth. You see it there, Yvonne Simona's, the blue tournament cloth. Uh, OBQs. Kamui Tips and Chalk. The Pool Player Excuses Towel, great little crying towel. Check that out at PoolPlayerExcuses.com. And the Bank Shot the bank Calculator. Shot calculator is right. Great app. Go check it out, folks. A few bucks, you get a, a, a warehouse of knowledge about banking and kicking. And you are watching InsidePool.tv. You should check out InsidePoolMag.com. If you want to see any of these matches uh, from this event or any of our other events, we have about 1,400 matches in a catalog over at YouTube. You can subscribe and find out when all of our new uh, videos are coming up from this event. It's free. Just go over to youtube.com forward slash inside pool mag and hit the subscribe button and you'll see all of our new videos coming out. Probably do that at Ustream too and know when all of our live streams coming out. But if you work with some of our great moderators like Upstate Al and Corner Market Bob, Steve and Heather Kurtz. Uh, they're managing the live stream news page on Facebook. Go over and like that page and start getting some of those announcements. Ronnie's switching over to the uh, right rail as we see it. He did break off the head rail actually right down the center and uh, got that uh, symmetrical break there where nothing can possibly go in uh, and which started Neil's little run. Coming from the side this time. Two well might go. Oh, yeah, it does. It does. And he's got a shot in the one. Didn't look like he hit, he hit that all that hard. Put a lot of body motion and uh, didn't really hit it all that good. All I think he did all right with it. Yeah, the, a ball went in and he shot and shooting on the one. What more could he ask for? Yeah, you get position, make a ball, and the balls are spread. The only, only the four seven because the three's down on the other end of the table really presents, uh, you know, a problem at this point. Yeah, I think it's natural here to get to the three, two rails between the five and the nine. Oh no, he's drawing yeah. something crazy here. Uh, oh, he's uh, got to bump every ball. And somehow that worked somehow out really worked well. Out. The four seven looks a little more agreeable, and the, he's on the three. <laughs> Maybe 
maybe that's it. Maybe he needed to bump those balls, but right now I'm shaking my head thinking, okay. <laughs> but it is Ronnie Alcano. Perfect. Oh, the speed died, but that looked awfully good. I guess that's the 10-foot that's the table shot. Mm -hmm. It looked perfect off the, off the first cushion. But you expect him to, uh-oh, make this ball. Well, he's going to be playing the cue off the 7 coming off the rail unless he can hit it with a little inside. So. just play the 7. Oh, no. oh, he nicked it. Hold just it. a hair. Why is that cue ball going now? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't it seem like uh, it was running the one way? Apparently we've got a little bit downhill action. This cloth is not napped or anything like that, but... Uh, seem to go much farther. <coughs> Getting back the six becomes uh, pretty challenging now. Well, I think he can he can hit this with high, maybe a hair of inside English and go one rail right up onto the six. Yeah, high, jacked up, eight feet away. Here he we go. He looks like he's drawing. I'm not sure I like oh, the he's shot. he's going forward for sure. Surely to goodness he's going forward. Okay. And Ronnie moving all over the place, most likely because he felt that he'd already missed that ball. Well, Niels has, if he can see the whole ball here, which I'm pretty sure he can, uh, he's going to hit this with a hair of high right and straighten a cue ball's path off the first or second rail. Oh, you think he can actually cut this ball in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He can yeah. cut that yeah, in if he, he wants. Yeah, then he can do that inside English, uh, slide it down, probably hitting right around the first diamond up, up above uh, the corner and uh, come straight back up the table. Because right now it's going to the second diamond, I think. If he hits it really thin, he can let it run without any English without at any all. English at all. Really thin, though. Yeah, he's hit this pretty hard, so he's and just... There's doink, another doink, shot doink. that's trying to go around the world. Well, he's landed okay. See, I would have hit that softer and let it come to the first rail and dive in. He would have missed That's all the balls sure. and he wouldn't have been downtown. But I guess he had his reasons for trying to hit it that right, firm. Right, right. Maybe that three rail around that we talked about wasn't really there. Maybe he felt that the table is leaning. Or maybe, you know, these they only put these tables in a week ago and they, they level them up and they do what they can with them. But, there's you know, if the player's thinking... This they might be it hard or something like that. It's such a thin shot. I want to make sure I hit it. You know, how many times have you learned that lesson? <laughs> Go into a strange table and you I say it's going to be level. And I see the lesson. I'm not sure I learn it though. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, uh, you know, Niels looks like he has another easy out from here and uh, stretching the lead back up six to one in a second. Only three things are going to go wrong now. Two. Earthquake. The nine. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> and the ten. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now only one thing can go wrong. You'll get my <laughs> jokes. I know they're not that good, but you know. <laughs> uh. well, Neil's fine looking unstoppable. He's the man. He's been in dead punch for the last few days now on this table. Ronnie looks like he's still, you know, shaking off the uh, cobwebs and trying to get the sea legs underneath him. Well, this is when you think of, you know, if this was a boxing match, That's this right. is when you go That's for the right. body. You can't let him breathe. That's right. And what he's supposed to do with, with Ronnie is not give him any shots. That's right. Don't be flailing away as if you're... <laughs> Don't play like you're in the lead in the bad way. Play like you're in the lead in the good way. Think of <laughs> Nick Varner. If Nick Varner has you 6-1. to one. <laughs> <laughs> He's still grinding. He's still grinding and, and smothering and shooting the right shots. He's not satisfied unless he de you know, demoralizes you and beats you 11-1. to one. Oh, one Crunch. ball in the side pocket almost again. It was, uh, I think, within six inches of that side pocket before he got hit. So I got to, I got to look at that theory again. You know, that maybe on a nine-foot table, it's already in the pocket, 
but something could have hit it if the table was just a little lighter. I think Ronnie can cut this back in the side. It's just the nine might be a little bigger than what he wants it to be. He's going to have to English it out like the cue ball off the first row and miss the nine. Yeah, it's a really thin hit. The nine is big, then the ten gets big. Hmm. Uh, er, again, back to what we were talking about. He's, he's behind. He hasn't <coughs> seen much, and uh, now everything is just, why couldn't this one ball be to the right a little bit, you know? <laughs> why couldn't it be out a little bit? If a I'm quarter of an inch. Right. <laughs> quarter of an inch. <laughs> change your world yeah I predict the nine ball is just gonna ruin his day here we banked it he said you're not gonna ruin my day yeah I refuse <laughs> <laughs> well I'll tell you he got great position here where is the clap on this one what are these guys still asleep their most recent memory of Ronnie is running out to the 10 ball and missing it so they'll clap when he makes the 10 I think <laughs> well he got that a game. that's my theory he got a game since then <laughs> <laughs> so. all right that's right so hopefully that memory's off the books look at the you know we've got some stone giants there or something those guys aren't moving which is a good thing but I'm not sure if they moved at all Slightly off to the wrong side, so Just draw it to the side rail and out. Unless you're willing to take a tough shot. Uh, there's draw side rail and out with a little bit of right hand English. Wants to miss this seven, but I don't know if he can, if he's able to. Straight across the table if he misses the seven. That's very nicely done. You notice that he, the, he hit the outside face, the right face, as he viewed it, uh, which means he cut it as thin as possible. It looked like the cue ball went through the seven. It, it was so close. Ronnie, Did he run short? Come up way short. Oh well, he's, he's no. There's the grin. There's the grin. Mm. Doesn't look so good to me. Yeah. Ronnie has his shirt tucked in today, and uh, I think in the past we've seen him both ways. Shirt out, shirt in. He's got to remember this. But his belt matches his shoes. So yeah, he's got black Mr. and white. Mr. Blackwell he's says. Got, <laughs> he's got black and white. Uh, his case is black and white. His I outfit was is black pink. and white. It, it's not pink. It's white. Yeah, it's white, yeah. Alex has the, has the pink one. Well, he's going to kick this and stick it. I see think if he can get a ball. See if he can make this ball. And it's going to lay in from the side pocket. Well, when they're rolling this way, they're rolling this way. Yeah. Well, he Neil's put himself in this position. I mean, really, he come up short on that. Uh, yeah. On the seven ball, <coughs> the six ball. He's allowed to get something besides, you know, a f leaving it right in front of the hole is that, what he's, that, you know, right. got to be thinking a little bit. That's right. <laughs> but yeah. he still did this to he himself. Still did this to himself. <coughs> Yeah, I have to admit, uh, being the recipient of this type of set where, you know, my opponent just is disintegrating and the game is so easy for me and, you know, it's so tough for him, I can feel for Ronnie. But, hey. Yeah, it happens. It's all good, though. As Niels, what Niels has to do is, is get ready for this to change, you know, because in a blink... It can turn around and be all Ronnie. All right. I've seen that happen as well, too. So, like I said, 11 nothing, 11 one's good. Yeah, that's right. That's right. 10 one, not so good. I mean, I guess, you know, and, and this goes to other, other sports. This is what got you here. Just keep on doing what you're doing. If you start doing the prevent defense, well, that's not what got you here. And guess what? It's things will change if you change what you're doing. Dance with the one to brought. Exactly. Ronnie, on the other hand, is losing, and therefore he wants to change something. <laughs> Tables. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Cities. Uh, yeah, opponents. <laughs> Can I change my opponent right now? If that's a choice, I'll take it. 
Parani actually came up here earlier to uh, to practice, and maybe he practiced himself out. He may have. Worn out his arm. Thrown too many pitches. Sometimes, too, it's uh, concentration. I know it sounds funny, but from somebody who played the game a lot of hours every day for a long time, uh, my battle towards the end was really being interested enough yeah, to play. You check out mentally. Well, you know, it, it's kind of like going to McDonald's and eating the same burger and fries every day after a while. I mean, you love it when, when you're first eating it. Right. But then especially you, that cheese you order it and after that first oh, bite, and right. you know, suddenly you realize you didn't want the burger. <laughs> it's the same burger. Same. Different mental attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, is... Uh, Anything gonna ever fall for Niels on that side? Yeah. I might change. First I, time he did. I I don't think I can stay in that point. I think he uh, he'll change now, but he also knows he didn't hit it a square. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got a break here. Ronnie Alcano is taking a break, so let's uh, use this opportunity to uh, thank our sponsors for the Bigfoot Ten Ball Challenge. We have Diamond Billiards, Simonis Cloth. OBQs, Kamui, their tips and chocks, the Bank Shot Calculator, and the PoolPlayersExcuses.com with a crying towel. Also check it out, InsidePoolMag.com. This is Freddie Agner. I'm here with the man, J.R. Calvert of Inside Pool. Well, I'm glad to be here, Freddie. Glad you're here, too. I'm glad I'm here, too. I can't miss this event. If I ever miss this event, I don't know what I'd do for the rest of the year. And I certainly couldn't sit home. And I'm sorry, guys. This is the greatest thing is to, to being here. But you got next to being here, but you got to get here. Sitting at home and, and watching the stream would drive me bananas. I mean, I, I'm part of, this, part of this event, you know. I'm like family here. They're my family, too. Right. <laughs> would be kind of like watching... Uh, a video of Mardi Gras instead of actually going <laughs> yeah, to Mardi Gras. That's, that's the too. difference. Oh, well, Ronnie's on his way back. That was quick. Needed to go up out there and slap himself upside the head and back in. Quick wash of the face. <laughs> quick flip to Danny Harriman. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Danny. See ya, Danny. Toshi Marguchi. The referee. Well, the first shot here is just going to be awful. You know, he's jacked up even if he's trying to play safety. Yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, the future of making this ball is not, there's no real promise. If I was to do a risk re re reward, risk reward analysis, analysis yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, uh, so I make it, now what? Yeah. So I think I'm going to play safe on this one just because I don't want to leave the table real easy for my opponent. I, I mean, it's an open shot and everything else, but I, by this point I've already tried to swing my arm and work out the That's cobwebs. That's right, that didn't work. I'm not going to try and keep taking these flyers all day long. Yeah, and he said the See same if he lets thing. It I think he got a safety here. I think that's what he was doing as a two-way. If he overcuts it, look what he um, could have got there. Two he overcut the that by a diamond, JR. I think he was playing safe all the way. Yeah. And it, it looked like he was going to come up perfect, uh, and that it would come and hit the left side of the four, as you see, it, and uh, and go into the behind the nine and ten, but it didn't. It hit the right side of the four. And, um, Niels has a full ball to look at. Well, if, if you look at this, He's got two ways to shoot this safety, and I like going off the right side of the one with right-hand English. Yeah, the path is right there. Yeah, if you run it flat, you can you endanger coming into the three, but you actually flop and go in between the six, seven off on a reverse rail, and I think you've got yourself a safety. Niels thinks so too. He's shooting that pattern. Here it comes. He's hitting into Don't the seven, I think. Yeah. Interesting because, uh, you know, he's got his 7-1 lead. Uh, just didn't quite get there, and he got frustrated. <laughs> so he's still into it with a big lead. That's a good sign. The bad sign is uh, 
don't knock yourself out of it just because of one safety that didn't come up perfect. It's not the end of the world yet. Not yet. Ronnie <coughs> came with a good shot there. I mean, every shot for him is going to be a good shot uh, considering the scoreboard and considering he's already missed several shots. He should just pull this back a few inches. Yeah, oh, he's going to go forward. That's fine. He's just going back to where I was saying. He'll zigzag go around the six, or even, he could even stay above it to keep an angle that would be right so he doesn't get trapped down below. Oh, that six plays huge at this point in, in his mind. You either have to commit to two diamond or one diamond. Okay, but he, you can't he go went on between. the other side, and he's right between. on it. And that's exactly what I said. I mean, he went right between, and he's... you got to commit, because below it... I know you, you probably should commit to below, because you need to break the 9-10 out, I think. I don't think the 9 goes. I think he has it. Well, if he does, he's uh, he's fortunate, because... When my opponent stands like that, he <laughs> buries the 4. Yeah. And you go, well... Okay. Is that his normal stroke? Because that looks like a loose give up stroke. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it, it looks a little flippish, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. I don't I don't see him play enough to know one way or the other. So maybe that was much better. I think he was trying to put a little English on that four ball and he might uh, have had a the dipsy doo type of uh, mm -hmm. English. It's the Efren drop the Q top Q on top of the ball type of English. Do you think he's coming over and nudging the nine? Let's see if it well, goes. Well, he'll tell you right me. away whether. Which. Right, because it didn't look like it went. But if he keeps the cue ball in front of the nine ten, where the cue ball's always looking at the seven, then he's he's good. Yeah. Okay, it goes. It goes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It goes. Now he has but to just get above the line of the eight ball to the side and bing bang boom, Bob Junkle. Did he get there? He did not get there. Well he must like <coughs> going three rails around or something, or do you go up and down with this? Yeah. Uh, I might go one rail, just up and down. With inside. I'm sure this ball is gonna die. Oh, he's good. He's good. And again, I haven't seen him stroke much, but the fact that he never stopped his stroke and shot that ball, is that the way he normally strokes? I, you know, I've never really analyzed his stroke, but I always got the impression that he was uh, a non-pauser. He Not just a non-pauser. <laughs> You know, kind of like an effort. Effort doesn't really pause. Well, I mean, at least he stopped somewhere, like at the mm -hmm. front. That time, Ronnie didn't. I mean, one of those shots, I guess, was the nine ball that he never even stopped uh, at the cue ball, the set position. Well, he's got another bead flipped over. If he doesn't forget it. Seven to two. Now, I, I, I see no promise breaking from anywhere right now with that <laughs> square hit. I, I don't know what I'd be doing. I think I'd go out one diamond over, and I'd try that because the s more towards the center and towards the sides doesn't seem to be working. Doesn't I'm going to try the 50-yard line. And, and, you know, it's, it's funny. Uh, I was thinking about this overnight. You only normally you only see like three distinct spots that the pros are breaking from: the side rail, uh, the edge of the box, and one hand span off the center. Mm -hmm. There's about another three feet of of workable area there, line there, and you just don't see too many pros moving to those other spots because a nine ball, the corner ball was always automatic, but a ten ball. On a 10-foot table, you might as well keep on experimenting with others because, as you said, there really is nothing happening with these other area, the other, you know, the side rails and, and all that. So you might as well, as well try another spot. There's a lot of spots there. Ronnie decided to go from the uh, head uh, center again and went slower and 
got nothing. I he mean, kiss down table, but he was really seeing if there was any action. Any other anyway. action? Yeah. He adjusted speed that time. It's tough to be the breaker and watch the balls. You know, it's easy to be sitting here and looking at the balls. Yeah, that's a good point. Did you ever use that uh, break rack? I uh, I have indeed. I think that thing is great. The only problem with me is that um, I threw my arm out shooting over <laughs> and over again. Isn't that sad? Rotator cuff? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a bad elbow, a golfer's elbow, so I'm always going to have an issue with it. And uh, it leaped up uh, on me. Leapt up. Leapt uh, up. But that, that break rack is great. Uh, thank you to Charlie Bond. Yeah, I, I liked it. The, well, the only thing I got to say is, is and the reason I brought that up, is it doesn't teach you rack interaction. No, not at all. And it's, there is some points to that that you got to learn by it, repetition of racking right. and breaking. Right. It uh, it definitely teaches uh, muscle memory, and not just you know arm muscle, but leg and and hip. You know, to try to get your timing without having to keep on re-racking balls. I think he's perfect here. He can either roll up if he wants or just stop, stop the cue. Stop it right there. Yeah. I would be stopping. Why well, invite a different variable, right? Now, the only problem that I see is that the position after that is all messed up. You're not going to be able to really beat those balls unless you... The 6-9, you come underneath him, then you run into the 7. If he rolls forward, he can just slide out and avoid all this traffic if he just admits to go against the rail and land in a one-foot area. Yeah, and to that point, JR, he really didn't even look all the way to the right because there was a position, maybe the cue ball, near the eight ball that you could cut the four ball. I don't know about trying to get between the six and nine or anything like mm -hmm. that, but I think forward might have been a, a path. But, um, sure. But stopping it right there, you're on the ball, uh, but you're exactly right. I don't know if he's going to spin up here or just go straight across the table. He could weave between the 7-9 with a little bit of left-hand English. And he wouldn't get in trouble if he, even if he hits the 7. But, yeah, sure. he's... He's playing uh, fairly, you know, pretty good conservative rotation where you keep the other balls out of, out of play, but it'll get you in trouble if you can't get close enough to the balls and have sharp angles. He Stop wanted a hair ball. more angle yeah, here. He needed, he needed yeah. <coughs> yeah. He's, uh, is he going even the wrong way? You're probably just going to stop this ball. Yeah, I'd probably stop this ball, let it float the two inches towards the center of the table because I don't think it's dead straight. But uh, I'm going to just make this ball, the six ball then, with high left and come across to shoot to seven in the same pocket. Yeah, that's what he looks like he's choosing. In fact, I think you can probably just hit with a... Well, you're right, high, high left. If you go high, you'll probably run right into the nine ball. Right. He may even roll this with center ball and left-hand English. Just so that, and try and keep it on the same side and then shoot to six in the other pocket. But for my money, I'm high left high and I'm left. shooting to six and seven in the same pocket. I think that's an interesting point, JR. And usually, if I'm going to do that center left, I'm, I'm stunning it in there rather than kind of rolling it in there because by that time, you'll have forward on there if you just use center left. Mm hmm. And it's not it's not a stroke in my repertoire to tell you the truth. It's not something I normally would ever do. So it's you need to learn it. Yeah, yeah. Um, what it is is it's a speed control technique. You're really only slowing the cue ball down after the shot with the same stroke, but it still has follow. Right. It's just it a still soft. Has follow. And what it does is, in, uh, if you slow your stroke down, you're not using the same stroke as you do with a natural stroke, and it's right. allowing you to use the natural speed of your stroke. Right, and that's a big key. Very big. So learn that stroke yeah, at home. Yeah. You know, roll from center ball like you're following it and only follow like five inches as opposed to maybe two right. feet. And you get the same pattern. <laughs> Just you get doesn't to, you doesn't you go get nine use, feet, it goes right. six. You get to use your natural stroke. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Niels is using his natural stroke to just run all over Ronnie Elcano. That, that stroke really comes up a lot when you're on new cloth like they are. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, there's times when I follow the ball like that for below center. Right, I only right, want right. it to have a little bit of progression, right. but it still has to have a follow shape. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, you just can't go crazy. And you might be shooting eight feet, but, you, you know, you don't want it to take off because you might be making a 40-degree cut. 
know, and it just stalls everything. Right. Eight to two, I believe, when he flips his uh, scorecard, the, the blue side. Now, come on, Niels, make a believer out of me. Go to one diamond in. Don't go to the side. Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, right. He's just going to go to the other side with the theory <laughs> that nobody racks exactly perfectly uh, uh, straight, and therefore. Not even maybe. him. All right. One ball in the side pocket, looking for it. Not a chance. That didn't have the crunch. No, no. And it looks like he's putting more effort into trying to get speed, and he's got less speed. That 3-4 is a little funky, but I think he can, he can work it a little bit. Producer Alvin Nelson, quick on the camera change there. See, they did it again where he was—he he never paused at the front even, you know, and a lot of, most players would at least pause, pause at the front to make sure they're using whatever English they're using. Looked like he was still kind of thinking about it and suddenly let it loose. I was always a front pauser because yeah. I wanted to feel where the, my stick was following through to, yeah. right? And I tried, Buddy showed me some stuff and of course, you know, I said, well, I'm going to try and do the back the pause back like pause. Buddy. And I did it for a day, and boy, I was playing so great. And I went in the next day, and I threw some balls out. And my first <laughs> stroke, I paused in the back, and I brought the cue through, and I missed a whole cue ball. <laughs> I looked for a second, and screwed, put my case in, and decided that was a good day to that go to the ball game. And that's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Never tried it again. <laughs> there are just some shots, some power shots that I cannot pause in the back I try I you know and I know you know if I throw in a eye pattern in there I can probably get there but just it's it's a lot of work and quite honestly I'm entirely too lazy mm -hmm. ball game it is <laughs> ball, game, ball it is. game it is well I had to deprogram myself I said oh well, if I'm missing the cue ball I can't I don't think yeah, I like I my odds I don't think you can pocket a ball if you actually miss the cue ball it's the hardest shot in the table to well, make a ball without hitting the cue. 3-4 was a combination uh, that he set up for and played, and played position for the three ball. Had the three ball happen to go in, the five ball was right there, so made a lot of good decisions there. And uh, he moved as he has been, and I thought he missed that one, but it did go in. It's going to be a follow stroke here, so let's see uh, if he pauses at all. Still moving. Oh, he paused there. I just want to know whether he's going to get an angle to the rail and zigzag to the seven or try and draw all the way out. Yeah. 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 Did he get the an angle, angle to the rail? Oh. Yes. Barely. Okay. Yeah, nice. Okay. <clears throat> Before the side pocket or after the side pocket? Uh, you know, I'm the type of guy that says do it before because if you don't get it before, then the side pocket will actually leap out and grab that cue ball. <laughs> and he's got the the rake. Now what? Hey, my buddy Chris Zuder just came up and. Uh, this is a nice the, oh, well, here we interesting go. Interesting way to hold the uh, the bridge. Well, the bridge isn't going anywhere like this. I mean, he's, he's bending that that shaft. And this tells me he's going back. Uh, yeah, before. Let's, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Hit before. He didn't try to draw it up table. No, he didn't go crazy. He put a lot of spin on that for for a bridge shot, but then again. Look how he's holding that bridge. That, that bridge was solid. <laughs> it wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> it wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> well, my buddy Chris Zuder, who uh, owns Fiddlesticks Cafe in Canton, Ohio, uh, said, is friends with Niels, and he said that uh, Burke Kenister taught Niels that pause. Well, I, I definitely, I definitely believe that. Bert on his tapes, uh, he has a pronounced pause. Alvin says that's his home room. Yep. Nice place. Ever been to Fiddlesticks? I have not. Nice joint. They have some tight diamonds in there. I think there's one there. It's like super tight. Might be four and a quarter inch pockets mm. or something crazy. And I think it's some of them, the old original diamonds, I think. If I oh, remember. okay. The ones that had the deep ledge. Right, right. Deep shelf. Yeah, the old diamond ones. I like diamonds the moment they came out, but definitely uh, the current diamond diamond pros, those are 
just fantastic tables. Eight to three now. Ronnie Alcano is trying to get back into this. Niels Fine is just three games away from moving on, but Ronnie is, uh, you know, Ronnie is Ronnie. Well, he made that rack look fairly easy, and it was not. It wasn't that easy. Not though. an easy one. Fancy bridge work. The fancy bridge work. Yeah, like that. Now I've watched Ronnie Alcano break a few times in other events, and he's had a pretty good break. And so far, he hasn't shown me any kind of effort to make that kind of break, uh, a bed break. I've seen him with his with his hand on the on the bed. And uh, he hasn't done it here. He's been rail bridging, uh, both on the side rail and the head rail for some st for a strange reason. And I do think it's strange for someone like him. I know he can bed break. Right. And he's going to the rail again. No, no, that's pretty far out there. He's. I think he's down on the bed. Yeah. No, it's it's a half. This is a, the what I'll call the Bustamante bridge. Bustamante uh, used to use this one from the side when he first uh, came over to the States. See, I mean, he, he hit that pretty good. Seven ball's going to leak in. Yeah. And the one ball just hanging out there ready to be uh, put down. The two ball in the center of the table only goes in the side pocket, I think, so it looks like a three railer unless he's willing to hit this pretty firm with inside. I go inside. I keep the six and the three and the four out of the, out game. Of the game. Yeah, I'm going to just come all the way down. I see he's hitting low. Really? It's three rails. Or two okay. two rails to the third rail is the is the position. It's, it's there. It's I mean, there. he's running close. And the reason I bring that up is that whenever you're not confident, you're down eight to three and you made 19 mistakes, Yeah. sometimes it's, you know, you just want to get to the next ball. Right. You and if he nicks that three, it's, you know, bye-bye, baby. Yeah. You don't want to call, give an opportunity for it to uh, make your 19th mistake. He's made yeah. the mistake. He's, he's done uh, something oof. right, though. But he's uh, got away with it here because he can make this three ball in the side pocket. But the position from the four to the five now becomes uh, pretty perilous. As h how do you get to the four uh, from hey, here? I he guess can he's come off the rail and back, back across. Out. And I'd get a, an angle. I'd go all the way all over. All the way across if you can get there. That way you can go straight from the four to the five without a rail, which is a real rare situation, but that I would tell you not to use the rail to control the angle of the cue after the collision with the right. object ball. Right. But that's what I'd be doing here. Well, this was what I, I was afraid of here, that he'd come up short and, and come up flat. Uh, I, I thought the side pocket was in play, but he mustn't think so. He must have, have enough space between the four uh, and the uh, the side pocket. Great Six shot. <coughs> uh, all kinds of room here. Now does the eight pass? I believe it does. Looks like you can, yeah. you know, drive one or two trucks through there. <laughs> I used to drive a bus for a living JR, and we used to say that if we had three eighths of an inch to the wall, plenty of room. Plenty, plenty of room. room. <laughs> Here come Ronnie. And we'll go back earlier in the game and uh, early, earlier in the set where he uh, hung a 10 ball. That two game swing, it could be, you know, 7 4. Still tough action here. Now, there's something I, interesting that I just noticed about Niels. You know how pitchers go into the dugout and they put a coat on? That's right. Niels is wearing a sweater right now. He was only wearing a golf shirt before. Ronnie has uh, sleeves underneath his golf shirt, so it is cold. I just put on something. If you, you know, I, I'm not a pitcher or, or going into a dugout, but I was getting cold thinking, I wish I had my jacket with me, and yet I have my sweatshirt and jacket hanging out of my chair behind me, so sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think that that's something that 
that we'll see when he gets to the table, he takes it off, I bet. Because it's long sleeve and yeah, it looks right. a it's little gonna heavier. It's going to be hanging all over the place. I wonder, I I has he been putting that on as he sat down every single time? He may right. have been. It's our fault for not getting a camera angle there on his go. seat. There you go. Well, that break That's worked for out for him. Yeah, this uh, this half uh, half rail bridge, finger on the uh, the cushion. That's important for balance. And and uh, style points. You hit him hard. Five ball. Oh, Eight ball. couple balls. And he has a shot in the one. He sure does. And this is a playable line. Yeah, it looks tighter from this angle, but uh, he quickly looked and, and walked away. But the one ball, I think, was actually still moving when he walked away. I think we need to do something with the, uh, the carpet here at the Horseshoe just Casino Hotel. Good shot. That's uh, just absolutely gorgeously held. And getting to the five, five to the six is uh, is now the toughest uh, shot for him, just because there are two other balls that are kind of in the way. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he's going to have any issue. I think he's going to come back against the side, almost where he's at now. He can draw and go actually in between the nine ten, and choose his angle fairly well. But. Yeah, maybe he's. No, I think you're right. I mean, I, that's what I would do also. Um, but suddenly you think, really? Do we really want to be doing between the nine and the ten? But it seems right. Well, you know, the problem with this is, is that he, I don't think he can get down for the three the way to get back to this side rail. So yeah, he's going to have go to go forward and back. I think. Yeah. This but back to your earlier point in the last game, maybe he just stops this to make sure he's always on the three, never out of position for the three, and just take take whatever he can on that on that uh, three to the five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as long as he has a big triangle out right. there of uh, right. position, he should be able to hit it. Yeah, it looks like he's going to go back and forth to try to get a better position on this three ball rather than stop. And that's not much better. Yeah, it's better, but it's not much better, is it? And it's not much better, but uh, let's now see if he can get in there. Yeah, he'll always stay in the nine, uh, five now rather than trying to... Uh, he did get where we said. Yeah. Okay, good. And I like this position That's so much right. better than anything else. I think he... Can he slide right... Yeah, there you go. Okay, there right right in between, between both of them. Okay. Yeah. Shouldn't touch I either. Mean, it, with ball in hand, this is probably where you'd want it. <laughs> exactly. Right? Maybe three inches closer, right? All right. Yeah, nice. But if he was over to the left, as we see it, it he may not have been able to do this. Uh, well, he, he's overrun just a little bit, but I'm sure he's uh, he can handle it. He's fine. That's he's a good, good shot. I mean, it... I'd say it was perfect, but he's got a stretch here. Yeah, he wanted to be up just a hair. That 10-footer changes this. I think on a 9-footer, yeah, Ronnie's a, a, he's a tall, tall guy. He's pretty tall, but this uh, is just out of comfortable range, I think. He's looking at cinching it and saying, as long as I get out there a couple right, inches, right. I don't have to do anything crazy. I just make the ball. Yeah, he can lean right out there. Ronnie is a tall, tall Filipino. He is a he, he's gigantic for a Filipino. Yeah, he's like six two. I'd say six one, something oh like that. Would you? He's even a bigger giant than I thought. He's he's if he's not six foot, I'd I'd be surprised. Yeah, I, yeah, he's definitely six. He's over six foot. But uh, <laughs> if he's six two, that that's <clears throat> awfully tall for a Filipino. For those of you that do not know Fred, he is a Filipino. I'm Filipino. I'm five seven. I'm you know, and I'm tall for for my family. <laughs> You're the giant. I'm the giant. I'm three inches taller than anybody in my uh, in my family, my immediate family. Now is this eight four or eight five? Ooh. Uh, I thought it was eight five. Three. Well, you know, he'll he'll tell us because he's obviously he's going to go over there and flip it. 
Yeah, I think I, it, it's eight. I think it's like eight five. I'm gonna also. mark eight we'll five. We'll see what happens because I, just think I was just saying that uh, going back to the 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 ten uh, that he hung earlier, it, it could have been seven four. So it would it should have been eight three. He, he may have already flipped it. Here we go. And he is flipping now. You're absolutely correct. Eight five. I went out on the limb there. Yep. Yeah. They've been flipping it uh, after the Iraq. Mm -hmm. Which is normal. Well, I think we snoozed the update on the score last yeah, okay. time. Okay, all right. Eight to five, and uh, he's broken the balls enough to get a ball in, and enough to get a one ball up up table to the high uh, the head left pocket. Cue ball is off the table. Where's the ten? <laughs> <laughs> the ten ball was just about to hang near the uh, the corner pocket, but uh, th the three ball decided to take it out. That two ball. ten, it's a little funny. Oh, six all eight is all messed up. It's all kinds of funny. Yeah. Now but let's the six see. eight is so bad that. Uh, yeah. Might be a freebie, and look what Niels does. Well, he took up his took off his warm up jacket. There we go. So we actually made a good point. Wow. <laughs> Inside pull one, the rest of the world a million. <laughs> <laughs> well, do Safety. you even try three fouls here? Sure. Why not? I mean, can you shoot, put them behind a five and maybe the bank the one up by the t in between the two ten? Well, I was thinking if actually the one ball cleared the uh, five, you can shoot the one into the eight, six, break them out, and just tuck right into the five ball. That's a good shot as well. Uh, which side of the eight do you hit? Well, you can shoot the eight or the nine, I suppose, if it, uh, if it doesn't. Uh, I think you're forced, actually, if you're going to hit the eight, you hit the right side of the, the eight, just because that's the only side you can hit. I don't think shooting the nine's good, because I don't, that doesn't guarantee any, anything. It looks like that would guarantee that your balls would be all still clumped up. See, I really yeah, so. think that if he wants to shoot this combo, it's okay. Especially if he plays safe by taking a cue over into the 6-8. Well, let me ask, if you had ball in hand, where would you put it and could you reach it? Now, as a right-hander. As a right-hander, I would be in between the 7-8. And it's still a stretch, isn't it? Sure is. <laughs> I'd be, a, I guess, a little bit further towards the center of the table, but down towards the spot. Right, and so now as you keep on talking about it, now that two ten combination gets worse and worse. Oh, it's not a, it's <laughs> not a, it's not a good bargain. But I do like p putting the one ball up here. Yeah, he's shooting this. I mean, and he probably has the best angle a with the best uh, ability to reach. I think he's darn near perfect, as good as he could be. Right. I mean, he doesn't want to stretch any further than what he is right now. So the I guess the problem only is, is, is uh, guarding against hanging the two and leaving the easy 2-10 combo. Hmm. Did I tell you about the picture that somebody posted on Facebook of uh, a young Niels and Nick Vandenberg? They must have been 12 years old each. They're just laughing and having fun and hanging out. Wow. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Niels said it wasn't hard. Yep. Nine to five. Niels Fine stopped a small run by Ronnie Alcano. Ronnie just uh, looked at the scoreboard. Uh, you know, <laughs> you don't need to look at the scoreboard. You can feel it. <laughs> Nine to five. It's the Dolly Parton score. I assume half of the chat did not get that reference. <laughs> Who else was in that movie? Jane Fonda Jane and Fonda. Lily Tomlin? Yes. Dabney, Dabney Coleman. Coleman. Oh, yeah. Classic. Neil staying with the same spot. He just wants to hit him hard, and he's been able to hit him very hard from here. Hey, he got the one, one and the seven. There it is. Now he's the thinking. two. Oh. Where is it going to go? Another two ten. Yay. <laughs> well, I believe the two actually passes yeah. at this uh, this point. I think you are indeed correct that the two has a room. 
And and he's in position where he can roll it in and get on the three. Yeah, so you can see from there that looks like uh, it's awfully close. Yeah. But the three to the four is not that hard. He can shoot the four in the side pocket where the two's at right now and fade going down. So this is really easy. Two, three. Yeah, make the two and then uh, it's... And he's shooting well, so we expect that uh, if he gets to the three, he's going to get out. The only thing is he's got to, you know, hit this with a little bit of inside to really get the correct angle on the three so that the cue ball doesn't risk taking off on him on the f to get on the four on the side. Uh, he is putting inside English. Just a touch of inside. And he missed, missed it by the a ball. lot. By a ton. Yeah, the, the yeah. 10 ball must have scared him. You know, that could be a big mistake. Uh, at 5-9, Ronnie's up. So now, once he does the behind the back, oh, left-handed. These guys. Get the bridge. It's a bridge. If, if Alvin was here, he'd be screaming at them to get the bridge. There you go. <laughs> table's so big, I guess you can just uh, follow this ball and play the four ball on the side. I think on a bigger table, I mean a smaller table, he might swing too. That's good. Now he can follow and get close to his work on that five. Mm -hmm. And he'll have every option in the world. He can even stop the five if he ends up getting sure, it right. on either angle, either side. Just not on the behind the nine. When we looked at the six ball. I mean, it looks like if he just stuns his ball, it goes up the table, but he'd have to stun it and hit it relatively firm. Can you follow this and st stay in a line that uh, shoots the five ball in the left corner? Can you follow it? And it's hit with the follow, you know, high ball and just kind of drift down. Because it looked like to me that you wanted to get to the left side of this five ball. He stared at that six ball as if it's, in, if it's in the way. I don't, somewhere. He should be able to follow forward about a foot and a half on this. And this would be a center ball rolling. Yeah. So you just crawl it in, I guess. Yeah. Just like that. He looks like he almost missed it, but yeah, and he's fine. He's fine. He's got a reach. Swing two. Yeah, he just doesn't stop that stick uh, during his warm-up stroke. I don't understand how he could possibly be the world-class uh, type of speed control uh, type of player with, without ever stopping the cue. But different strokes for different folks, and that's exactly how he's been shooting for a while. That time he paused. Every shot, has a, he's got a little bit different, um, different, little different routine, technique. Yeah, yeah. different technique. Yeah. Well, you know, again, this is really the first time I've seen him playing in a tournament. Uh, as, much as, I, as much as this, sometimes you get to see it on the stream, but uh, this is closer than the stream. See, I never could really do anything but pause up front. I'd do like add a few warm-up strokes and pause towards the cue ball like he'll do, and then I'd do one warm-up stroke and go. And I never really did that pause in the back. It looks like his... Uh, that's, a, that's like Buddy Hall position there. Coming across, he's only three inches away, but it's as good as you can get. <laughs> <laughs> so he does pause up front, and then he does the, the fluid stroke and then deliver. It looks like he pauses two or three strokes before his final stroke. Mm -hmm. So it is a pause, but it's not on the, on the last, uh, on the last uh, stroke. Right. And uh, I've now, now that I'm staring at what he's doing, he's pausing.
paused in the back, you know, that millisecond mm -hmm. uh, on a firmer stroke. But the softer strokes, there doesn't seem to be a pause. He's just kind of, it seems like he's in the middle of warm-up strokes and suddenly the cue ball's gone. That's exactly what he's doing. He, it, well, what he's doing is he's, he's giving one fluid warm-up stroke again instead right. of just pausing and then doing one delivery. And there's nothing wrong with momentum strokes. I, I, I like them. I used them all my life. I had to learn about the pause. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? But uh, that's just me. I mean, I, I have no problem with this stroke. Well, I do, JR, so I'm going to have to write him letters. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get a harshly worded gonna letter. Say, I'm, I'm going to get a com give him a complaint letter. <laughs> uh, Ronnie really needs to go back to it where he had decent success. He's forgotten where he broke from last time. No. Okay, there he goes. So I thought he was going to go to the, the head rail again. He didn't measure up this time, though. He has been putting the cue ball to the first uh, diamond and then sliding forward, but maybe he sees a spot. Maybe he sees the chalk mark and the burn mark. Uh, no. No. He has been doing the... Uh, no, he's doing, a, he's doing a full rail bridge now, so he's got a little bit closer. Boy, oh boy, he just keeps on changing now. He had success with the uh, partial bridge, partial. Uh, doesn't he remember? Well, he's not left anything easy for Niels. Well, the guy in the lead has the easy one three. If a guy was from behind, it'd be the like the most heinous one three combination. Yeah. Even though it's the same combination. And he's going to get a roll. Can he see this ball or not? He can see it. He can see it, but look where the cue ball is going. Um, yeah, I'm not. I mean. I think, I, I think he can't really hit it. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think he can hit it. Well, he's looking up table as if uh, he can hit it, make it, and get buried in the... Uh, in the forest, forest okay. full of trees. Okay. Let's see. Rear back. Take a look at the score now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly, yeah. It's big. Come on, Ronnie, take a look at that score. What's he doing there? Don't, doesn't he know that the BCA league rules don't allow you to put <laughs> put a piece of chalk there to uh, <laughs> to uh, use it as a target? <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> yep, that's what we got. Go. We got a target. And remember this Kicking point. Kicking at the ten. Uh, One ten. There you go. Let's see what. Uh, Oh, he could see that. He saw the ball. That's going to hang in the side. Well, that's karma. <coughs> yeah, that's that's a questionable thing to do is to go over and put that chalk there. I mean, there's every everything in the world can say he since he could see the ball, he wasn't really a measuring right. anything. <coughs> Nils is going to keep the sweater on this time. That's right. Keep it cold. Now, uh, for anybody that's watching this on our YouTube channel in the middle of August, it is February 1st here in Louisville, Kentucky, 2013. And uh, I think the temperature this morning was a balmy 12 degrees. Oh, well, it was 9 when I got up. 9. <laughs> 
you got up in the afternoon. <laughs> it was nine. Cold. But we've had some all kinds of uh, we've had all, we've had all kinds of weather uh, when we we come here to the Derby City Classic. I mean, it's usually at the end of January, and anyway, it's going to be cold. But uh, we've had snow, we've had ice, we've had rain. Had a note from Chris Zuter again, who says he thinks he sw Ronnie switched to a Muchi. Is that what he did? Yeah. Wow. Go ahead, say it. Yeah. He, he got that Muchi a couple days ago, and uh, Mario, a friend of ours, staking him. He's like, he's telling, telling, he's telling Mario that he wants to use the the Muchi for the one of a couple matches ago. Mario's kind of mad, but he's like, hey, you know, he's a grown man, whatever. But <laughs> He ends up doing great with it. And then he, the last set, Muchi wins. And then this set, he wants to switch back to the Viking. <laughs> and Mario's like, what are you doing? You're playing great with me. He's like, oh, I won the world championship with the Viking. I feel good with it. So he's like, not getting good results. So he switched back to the Muchi. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only you would notice that. I had no idea. <laughs> you know... Uh, it and this is funny on his right arm i think he has a viking q tattoo oh is that right he has the viking <laughs> logo I, I just want to know did he get paid for that please <laughs> tell me he got paid for that <laughs> i don't think that was the case our friends over at viking like it <laughs> well maybe he got a temporary one he puts on every morning <laughs> meanwhile uh neil's put himself in this position here the, the three ball the red ball is the next ball but neil's tucked himself and, and made a mistake and that was the first shot he took with the sweater on that really was he's not going to remember this he's going to look at this later on or you know somebody's going to tell him later on uh cat will say uh you know you shot with that uh you shot with your sweater and completely went long. Well, I think he has to run three rails here, and that's my theory that I was getting at. What he's trying to do is if you count on this side of the table, you've got six balls. Down on that side, right. there's two. But it really one because you're going to take that three ball three, out of the right, right, right. So what he wants to do is run three rails in behind the three ball, missing and, the six, and, and getting both balls up yeah. into this mess. But it looks like he's only going to fire this one one rail, and if he hits yeah. it, the three ball will still hang out. Uh, he's paid the price the, dearly. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, even, even if he didn't scratch, the cue ball and the three ball would have been the same half the table, and the three ball would have gone someplace. So exactly to your point, um, it, it looks like even if he didn't scratch, he would have had the worst of it. Oh, he, he got double kissed because <laughs> and, and uh, both balls were going to just be hanging out all exactly. o wide open. Yeah. The, no, so that was pending disaster, is all I could see. That was uh, quite a mistake there, and uh, maybe the biggest mistake of all was keeping the sweatshirt on. Now I think he's going to want to go down just a hair on this one. That way he can shoot the six into the same side pocket as the five. See if he just floats oh, this just oh, below, a little below. bit. Yeah. There. Uh -huh. He's nice. still below. But he can go forward, and uh, it just ends up being speed. We're going off the cushion. It's easier to control speed coming off the cushion than it is trying to just float it too. Let's see where he's at now. He's all the way over across. Either that or he has to leave the cue against the rail and shoot the six in the upper corner pocket, left-hand oh. corner. He never. Uh, he's never gone over there to even consider that, so... It's uh, not exactly. Looks like it's such got an angle that he'd actually hit the seven ball. Yeah, see, this is what I thought he'd do is come uh, one, in, one, one out just for that and, and give up on the six in the, in the side pocket. Side mm. pocket. It's funny because he did all these other shenanigans, and this was the shot that I thought he had to take because just because he left himself it, you know, maybe try to convince himself one way or the other. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Convince himself not to do one, you know. Sure. But, you know, he's got there. Well, Up I think it's the only three things that can go wrong now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are they, Fred? <laughs> the eight, the nine, <laughs> or the ten. Uh, that joke never gets old. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Uh. We 
great shot. Yeah, it, that's interesting. That is interesting to me right there, and I'll bring it up again because the table's so big. The cue ball never got to the cushion yet. That kind of angle, that cue ball always goes to the cushion. You know? Yeah. People are starting to clap now. Yeah, they've woken up. Maybe they've got some sweatshirts on. Maybe it's a strong, strong Ronnie Alcano crowd. There and they didn't go. like there the idea that there. Niels was running out. I think that's probably it. There's a possibility. The Filipino uh, contingency Contingent. over here has a huge following. I mean, in the room. I'm not saying this <laughs> you know, back in the Philippines. I'm saying there's a lot of people that like them as people and follow them and hang out. Once, yeah. Yeah, that is a different cue, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this one has four gold points or brown points on it. I guess if it would have had flashing neon lights on it, I might have picked up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even see it. But, yeah, under his right arm there, uh, your left arm, you can see that that is a Viking. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. When he pulls it off, I think it's his left arm. See his left arm on the forearm. Well, maybe he likes or is it the right arm. <laughs> yeah, it's under the. <laughs> it's under his uh, long sleeve on his right arm. Here. Oh, okay. But it's right on the forearm, and it's a Viking logo, tattooed there. Wow. Well, you know, we have another fashion faux pas here. Uh, if Sunny Day was with me, she'd point it out immediately. He has rolled up his left sleeve. Is that right? He's rolled it up. It's not a cut off left sleeve, right? No, I think it's cut off. Wow. It's like Has it been like Michael that all Jackson match? Michael Jackson meets, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's been like that, yeah. My bad. Um, now, you know what? I I could be wrong. He could unroll it in right, two right, seconds here. Right. I don't know. I can't tell. Or it's the kind where you pull off, you know. There's actually, he has a short sleeve shirt and uh, two of those arm uh, women's fashion there, and he pulls that mm. off, you know. All right, he went back to the other style of rail bridge, moved it out a little bit. He was able to hit this one a little bit harder, and he did hit it a little harder. Two balls going to go in. A uh, four ball, four ball. Oh, how does that not go in? Wow. Niels has a little bit of a choice here, doesn't he? Yeah. I think if he doesn't watch it, he can make both these balls, and it might be the shot yeah. is to try and follow it in. I think you have to go for it. The, I think. Well, the problem is the the two the cue ball takes off on him here. I think so. You know, he won't really be in position on this. This is an interesting spread, JR, because all the balls are within the four. Well, the five is probably just out, but all yeah, all within four diamonds into the center of the table, like in a circle almost. Kind of looks like Stonehenge. Yeah, and it, you know the other side of that too is what's so interesting is nothing's really blocking anything else as right. much as they look like they're clumped up. It's just a massive table. You know, is, is this a shot where you roll the dice because you really, it, it looks like a lot can go wrong and a lot can go right? Well, I might carry him off the eight into, into the, the four. four. To, so that you can hold your cue ball. Right. The problem there is is that my positioning would be for the one up in that corner pocket. I don't think I'm going to really do anything. But I think there is <laughs> space you that you can actually hit that same carom but hit the right side of the four or full in the face but yeah. we don't have a really good angle do we to, to check that yeah. oh there we go Oops. yeah see there's a big gap there and it looks like the four ball not, might not even fall you don't want to tickle the eight because it goes right to the seven yeah a lot can go wrong there and uh, yeah. everything was wrong. If the one ball fell, he he wouldn't uh, have the two either, which is what you said. You, you're going to take off. Uh, well, the good news is, is I think he's going to hit it and, and make and it. And make it. And the eight ball is is nice for him to, uh, you know, herd it towards the uh, three ball. Yeah, it'll get corralled over there, and I think uh, the speed he's going to hit it. If I was to guess, it would be only go out about a diamond past the eight after he made the hit. I don't think he's going to load this for bear. I think he's going to load it for squirrel, you know. Well, the the only thing about that is that if the 8 in the end all it does is crawl to the 7, then 
you know, that, that I guess that would be the worst of it because a six is right there. When you make the six, you break those balls out. But yeah, you fully expect at this point that he will be shooting at the two ball next. Yeah, I, I wouldn't really worry too much about tying the balls up um, because I'd still be at the, be at table. the table. and solve it after that. Oh, he did load he, it up there. He loaded it up and uh, got some separation. Let's see what we got over here. Three, five, six. Yeah, so the only the problem is uh, getting the angle on the six to make sure you've got the seven. Yeah, and you can go to the rail and hit into the eight. Do that old true. Yeah. Side rail manufacturing a brake shot like right. a straight pull we've seen all week long. That nine is really kind of irritating me right now for this yeah. run out. It made right. that run out so funky because you can't get right. guaranteed to go from the five to the six the entire route and be on the right side. And you've said something like that before, JR, and it, it's the classic ten ball action where something is hanging out in the middle, whereas a nine ball, when you break them well, usually the center of the table is wide open and you get those nice nine ball patterns. The standard patterns are no longer available as long as that ball is sitting dead squat in the center of the table. <laughs> Just stop it there because he mm -hmm. had a good angle. <clears throat> well, anything he did took the angle away from, you know. Yep. So here you go. Shot of the rack. The only thing he doesn't want to do is freeze on the eight. Even though he's right-handed, he still doesn't want to freeze on this eight. Yeah, that'd be the worst of it. Or well, there's miss. the other thing that he, he didn't want to do. Wow, we haven't seen him miss a ball like that. Um... You know, he did miss another one, but there was a, something the in the ball. way. Yeah, the, the two, two ball, ball when the ten ball was in the way. But uh, that one, he hasn't missed a shot like that, uh, I don't think, all day. <laughs> that score now, once again, I'll bring up that hanging ten where when Ronnie hung the ten. But then if he didn't hung, hang the ten, you have a completely different game. Right. Right. <laughs> Stretched out drop. Players have had problems with this. Not Ronnie Not Alcano. Ronnie Alcano. No. Now, is it Alcano or Alcano? Well, you know, the Spanish way to say it would be Alcano. Okie dokie. Just making sure. Figured if there was anybody to ask. <laughs> this is going to be a long shot here, but he was shooting this shot earlier for practice and two-tonning it into the corner pocket. I doubt he's going to two-ton this one, but... Take a second to say hello to my buddy Ryan Roan. He's out there checking it out in his TV room, and he said, looks awesome. Nice. It skidded uh, on him. Did you see that it skid? It all skidded on him. Unbelievable. That was bad. Did you see how far that ball actually slid, the eight ball? I mean, it was, it's like it stood still for but kept on moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> it looked... It looked bad. It sounded bad. It's That's that sound that, I mean, it's the nails on a chalkboard to a pool player. You hear it and you... And you see it. <laughs> and you see the world's worst thing happening. <laughs> you come to, to, you know, equate the two. All right. That sound means you missed and the other guy's going to be laughing. <laughs> What a time. I mean, the shot was tough enough. 7-9. If he makes that, he clearly he goes 8-9 eight to, eight to nine and breaking. 
Instead, we're going to have Niels on the hill. I agree with that shot. I didn't like traveling for Going some reason. I was, I was having a hard time feeling it. <laughs> well, you didn't like the nine to begin with, so it probably had a voodoo curse going. Nice. Man on the hill here. Huge, huge game. Ten to seven as opposed to eight to nine. And that, that makes the hole a little deeper there for okay, sure. Ronnie. Alcano. Ronnie Alcano. <laughs> he just wants to stroke this as if, yeah. Did Niels uh, go take a break? I think Niels went and took a break here. Ronnie's going to take a ball out. And He's going to shoot that again. Uh, don't do, don't torture don't yourself. Don't torture yourself. Plus the BCA uh, pool leagues would, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> he's shooting a different shot. He wants to go come across uh, the table to see if he could have come something shorter, I guess. There was a nine in the center of the table, so he wasn't going to go above. One rail across uh, would have been closer for the eight, and um, no, he was still short. Probably would have made that one, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it, you know, probably comes down to just a little chalk left on the on the tip. No, now he's going to shoot it. Oh, yeah, well. I really, yeah. Just, this this Let's ball was nearly straight in. Relive the agony. That's yeah, about it, right there. That's about it. Yeah. No, that wasn't it. Uh, yeah, yeah, about uh, right there. It was. It was pointed about three inches out from the side okay. pocket to be straight, or the corner pocket. Same shot, but he didn't <coughs> hurt that time, and it, it didn't skid that time. But uh, it certainly did before. <laughs> mm -hmm. In fact, I think he missed the whole pocket. Uh, no, no, he wouldn't have. It would have gone. It went to the left, so he must have. He still caught the pocket. See, now we're in a situation where I don't like this. You can shoot yourself way out of the game. You know, do you do this because you're frustrated or you're just going to get more frustrated? I mean, I'm. if nobody's going to get mad that I'm up taking a few swings, fine. I might try and fine-tune. I wouldn't do anything that would be... Uh, what a shot. Look at this guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, but I, I wouldn't be out there slamming balls. I would right. be trying to do more things that were... Uh, touch shots because I'd, I'd be more interested in being able to draw two and a half feet right. when I wanted two and a half feet than accidentally drawing ten feet. Bank is on. Who is he? <laughs> <laughs> Am I interested to see if Niels keeps his sweater on? <clears throat> Well, he's had it on uh, now for the last couple of games, so he must be cold. Yeah, that's the speed. That's it right there, <laughs> yeah. The speed. And that was pretty much the speed he had shot it before, not much uh, faster than that. And the ball turned over on him. It's a lot of time where the ball skids is it's a speed and a little bit of chalk left on the cue ball. Mm -hmm. little residual chalk. And it just catches <coughs> the spot. It has to catch the spot on its on its uh, on its way over there. And you know it's really dangerous when you get guys that break and hit so good of center ball like Niels and Ronnie. Yeah, you're gonna go get. Uh, you get that moon shaped. <laughs> that's right. You know, it's like a full moon of chalk left on the on the ball. You know, a lot of people complain that more skids happen ever since the the Simona's cloth came, and I've got a couple theories on that. One was that the uh, the cloth is so slick it doesn't wipe off the uh, the chalk as easily as older cloth would but i think my other theory is that because everything's nice and nice and slick you don't have to use so much spinning in i guess you could say you know you don't spin in so many shots so suddenly you're, you're doing a lot of more stun shots um, and that's when you're going to get your most throw you know with the stun shot so you, if there is a little bit of chalk and you're using stun, you're going to see what it would look like a skid, whereas in the old days you'd be spinning with helping English, with lo well, what a lot of us would do helping English with before Simona's cloth became so popular. All right. 
I think uh, Niels is saying, wait, this ball is a little bit dirtier. Oh, well. <laughs> it looks like somebody's been shooting this ball. Why is there chalk on this six That's ball? That's right. Now here's something interesting I heard yesterday from uh, sh from Big Arm John. He was saying, uh, as he was having problems racking the balls, okay. uh, that two of the colors, two of the colors, wear down quicker than the other uh, six, seven balls if you're playing nine ball. Yellow. No, no, it wasn't the yellow. It was something like the four ball and the seven ball or the three ball and the seven ball because of the pigment. Now, if he said four, yeah, so four and seven or three and seven, and uh, I'd never heard that before, but as a manufacturer and a processor, I know that pigments will cause a difference in your final mm -hmm. product, and you can only accept the tolerance, overall tolerance, and maybe, maybe the those ones are the ones you know more susceptible to, to uh, wearing down faster. I just can't, you know. I can't sign off on I, that theory I can't yet. either. I can't either. Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Look at that but, break. Uh, I got to put it on the books now and and, uh, and think about it. Not that I'm the end all to to, to <laughs> judge and and, and, and uh, you know. Put well, I know that the one decision, ball can end up being smaller. Well, it makes sense. It gets smashed the most. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it gets hit. It gets hit. The cue ball is going to be the one that gets the smallest quicker, you know. And you're only talking about microns. Right. Well, I've seen the one ball be small. Very small, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which doesn't, it, you wouldn't think that's the case, but, you know, it sure does get, it takes the brunt of everything. I just remember one of those cartoons where the one ball, this cue ball speeding at it, the one ball got its fingers in its ears and it's gritting and for impact, <laughs> ah, you know. That's right. Does he have a shot on this one ball? No, not that I can see. I mean, I he might be able to make cutting. it. He's cutting. Yeah, as soon as I saw oh, yeah. that, that he really was the looking at the shot, I saw and the, and the three ball kept the position of the, the two ball in, in play. It's come away from him, though, but how does he get there? Well, the seven blocks one path. Boy, that'd be really, really, really sweet if he could clear the seven with a ton of English. Yeah, he has to go. Spin it out there. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> <laughs> Where does he go? He may end up banking at the banking. three. I mean, the four's in a position where if he just came down and got the bank shot, I think he could. Sure, why it. not? Why not? It's not. It's not bad at all, is it? No. I mean, if it could be worse. It could be the nine or the eight, and it would really not be good. He's looking at the bank now. I think he's got a plan. You go past the seven on this, don't you? Go down and back up. I think he was looking at how bad you can get before you can't bank it anymore. So. Yeah, I would, I would get it, you know, right by the eight. Down and See, get I, back I would up. also, but he was aiming from here, which was kind of, you know, so he's going to cross over, I think. Boy, I wouldn't think he should. Yeah. I mean, I would have thought he would he would have been up another... Another diamond at least. If we had our bank shot calculator, yeah, it could tell us diamonds. exactly. Yeah. He's close to this being where he can hold it up. I think he can hold it up. He's off by about, you know, a half diamond in my book. But you can hold it. Hit it with a little left-hand English and... Stick it there and... Firm. Need to see John Brombeck. He has his new video DVD video on banking. I'd like to get that in my hands. Just because. Just because. <laughs> Just because. <laughs> when a world champion uh, bank player wants to give up the information for a few measly dollars, I'll take it. Sign me up. Sign me up. taking too long here to play safe you know this this match is entirely too close this isn't a hanger bank I think he's just outside of a decent bank <coughs> I know you say you think he can hold it up but I keep staring and I'm thinking you can but as long as you have three tries <laughs> there he goes he chalked up because he's gonna put it a lot of inside English or left-hand English in this case. I try to cross over, and the kiss was never not on. <laughs> never not on. <laughs> well, 
I think Neil's can cinch his ball, believe it or not. Yeah, he doesn't have to do too much. Right, cinch his ball, and the cue ball is just going to fall to the left as you see it. Neil's had missed a ball in the last track, but still won it. And uh, it's been so long that I have a feeling he's completely forgotten about it. Cinched it, and it fell over to our left by one rotation. Perfect. El perfecto. Well, if he can get through this rack, he will move on to the next round. A little more angle than he uh, than he wanted. Is it high enough he can just draw to the side rail, or uh, does he have to go forward, in which case he might even that? I'm going to draw out of this, and I'm going to take it up by the 8 and off the rail. Yeah, it looks like he's aiming high, though. And I didn't, uh, I didn't think he could clear the 6, but when things are going your way, this happens. They really go your way. All he has to do now is, I think, now this I follow. I do it and let it dive. I don't use any left English, and I kind of come up as high on that seven as I can after right, right. two rails. Credit to uh, Ronnie. I mean, I think uh, other guys would be looking at the scar styles and shaking their head at that last shot, but he never moved. I don't know what happened behind us, but apparently somebody hung a ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, he may, you know, looking at this angle here, he may end up going into the corner and below the nine. Or below the below, 10. Yeah. I, mm, I give it a chance to go up there. I don't I don't draw this ball. But he says, nope, he says I'm drawing. Nope. He's going to put <laughs> the... Do you have a name for the shot if he draws it? You know, where you draw this and it kind of curves and bends to the rail with the outside English. And the the big whip. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've seen guys force this withdrawal below the nine or below the ten and then back up towards the eight and then back to the side rail again. It's a yeah. big draw shot. Well, this one, I think he's just going to go above uh, the ten here. There it That's is. better. Zing. And he didn't go crazy trying to make sure he was dead straight. Mm -hmm. He'll have to go up the table, but um, as long as he has... Ice. He may soft roll this in and leave the cue about right there where this tip is. Oh, yeah. Nice little soft roll. See how he's going to roll from below the center of the so ball? Hitting, yeah. Or center ball, but not he's not hitting high to get it rolling forward mm -hmm. immediately. Kill the speed. I might even use that same stroke here yeah, with a hair of right-hand English and yeah, really use it. be going pretty slow here. He there you go. It. He's hit this way, it hit that harder than, he looked to the stars. Mm -hmm. He's gonna go to the side. I'm guessing he's got some chalk over there. Put the yes. chalk on his shaft and. And I roll this one down the rail. I sure come, I stay on the same there. side of the side pocket. I let it drop. Right. No need to f force it below just to get it closer. Just slide across. Well, I don't want to be stretching or anything like no, that. I'll just not. you play this one pocket speed. Anything can happen when you're getting the the set closed out. Nice Good shot. shot. This is too long of a distance for uh, Ronnie to uh, concede. Neil's fine 
makes it to the next round. 11-7, had a big lead, but uh, Ronnie started uh, making it back, and uh, mistake uh, in the end by uh, Ronnie. Uh, gave that uh, uh, the Hill game to, to Niels, and uh, Niels walks through the door. Yeah, well, All right. we want to thank everybody for showing up. We want to thank our moderators, Upstay Al, Corner Market Bob, Heather and Steve Kurtz. I want to thank Freddie for Thank you for down. having me, JR. And last but not least, all of our sponsors, Diamond Billiards, Simona's Cloth, OBQs, Kamui Tips and Chalk, Bank Shot Calculator, and Pool Player Excuses Crying Towel. Folks, stay tuned. We're going to get another match heading your way. If you want to catch us or any of our other matches, go over to youtube.com forward slash inside pool mag. We'll get another match heading your way just in a few minutes. Thanks.